In today's episode, we're here in the Carriage Works to see what's been happening behind the scenes, including a familiar face. Welcome to In the Loop. Hello folks and welcome to the Watercress Line. Now before we dive into today's main topic, it's time for a quick far look around the railway to see what's been happening since the last episode. Well, let's start on this rather gloomy day up here at the Miniature Railway. Now over the winter they've been doing some track work, so the points here have been remodeled and inverted slightly. They've also put in the head shunt at the far end, which is going to be extended out into a pit, so you can do inspections of your locomotives and also make it easier to transport stock in and out of the railway for when we have visiting engines. Now on the line of stock coming to the railway, some exciting news for the Ropley Miniature Railway has a new locomotive joining its fleet, Steam Locomotive Ivo. It's currently down at Eastley Lakeside Railway where it has been overhauled by our good friends there and they're currently training up our teams to operate it and maintain it. So hopefully it won't be too long before we have a new steam locomotive gracing these rails. Now of course it's not just the miniature railway that have been doing track work. While we haven't been running our permanent way department have been up between Medstead and Autun doing some work on the track there. So let's head up there now and chat to Neil. <laughs> We're in the Alton section today, uh, working on one of the curves where we've noticed that the uh, super elevation, or otherwise known as Cant, is not as it should be. Uh, that's been noticed by one of the uh, track inspections. So the guys are out here today. We're not running trains at the moment because uh, the line is closed to passenger traffic. So we've got an occupation and this gives us the opportunity to get and do work that we can't normally do when trains are running. So what you'll see behind me is that uh, they're blowing stone underneath the sleepers. The sleepers have been jacked up slightly so you can do that. And beside me you can see Eddie at the moment, he's got the gauge. So when you lift up the, the track he can see that it's up to the level that it needs to be. Yeah. So what we need to do is dig the ballast away from the bottom of the sleepers. That then gives access to the bottom sleeper to put the stone under. Put jacks in under the rails and a cross level gauge as you can see there which is like a spirit level. We jack the rail up to the required height and then we can put the stone underneath the rails, let the jack back out and then it should settle at the correct height for the, the super elevation. Passenger might not notice it so much on this railway but if you're on a main line you would feel the train starts to tilt as it goes into the curve. If it didn't tilt it would try going straight on. So you need that rail to be higher to guide the train in so it goes around the curve and not straight on. If it wasn't there, it would be quite uncomfortable and fairly noisy, you get a lot of squealing from the wheels. Now aside from track work, when we haven't been running trains, our locomotives have had their annual exams and all of our coaches which carry passengers have been on the pit to have their annuals as well. This is an ideal opportunity to check the whole coach over thoroughly and identify any work that needs to be done and take the opportunity to do it now. Now we have some absolutely fantastic news. A lot of people have been asking, and yes, they are back. Our driver experiences, both steam and diesel. The experiences we're offering this year are a mix of loco only and loco with a train. So you've got lots of options. And if you would like to find out more about this and book a place, then do visit our website at watercrestline.co.uk. Exciting news for our Spring Steam Gala for the Jubilee class Leander will be visiting as a guest locomotive. It's going to be a fantastic few days and if you would like to see the loco before it runs out of ticket, it expires in May, then do visit wardcrestline.co.uk for more information. And in the spirit of looking ahead, we'd like to hear from you the viewer. Here in the film unit, we're always on the hunt for new episodes and we've got an idea of what we'll be covering over the year. However, we'd like to hear what you would like to see. It could be anything, it could be topics we've covered in the past that you'd like revisited or something brand new that no one's ever thought of. Comment below, there's no such thing as a bad suggestion, albeit some are more practical than others. And finally, you may remember last time that I mentioned that the railway had been nominated for two categories in this year's Heritage Railway Association Awards. The film unit was nominated for the Marketing and Communication Award for our In The Loop series 
and the S&T department were nominated in the Infrastructure Award for the work they've done at Residdling Medsed. Now, it was a fantastic evening. Lots of people did come up to say hello and it was wonderful to meet so many people. And the railway came away highly commended in both categories. So a huge congratulations to the S&T department. From a personal note, thank you so much to my wonderful team at the film unit. And congratulations to everyone who won an award that night. Well, a lot here happening at the Watercrest line. Now, if you were wondering why we didn't do too much on Rodpley MPD, that's because we've got another war command in the making. So you'll have to wait a little bit longer, but I promise you, it will be worth it. Now for today's episode, we're here in the carriage works to find out a little bit more about some of the projects going on. So to take us round, we have a familiar face who made his debut last year. Um, so hello, I'm uh, Simon, I'm uh, Will's dad. Uh, I'm a volunteer here in the carriage shop and at the moment we're standing inside a Bullied carriage. Now a Bullied carriage is a pre-Mark I carriage made, uh, designed by Oliver Bullied. And the, the, the real difference between this and the Mark I's or the most notable difference is these are a lot more wood in them. Um, so there's sort of wood frames and wood ribbing on the ceiling and actually a wooden roof. Um, this is a carriage that was restored, I think, in about 2015. We needed to replace the roof, which is why it's in here now. Um, and so you can see some of the sort of original wooden components that we had, and we've been making sort of new replacement ones. Uh, these are just a few spares. We've actually got most of the roof up there. Um, we're also taking the opportunity to fix things like some of the doors just weren't shutting properly, so we've got some other replacement doors that are going to be finished and then new roof on and then a new interior and it'll be back to absolutely sparkling new and we'll show you one of those a bit later. We're standing in the guards area of this particular carriage um, and I think that one of the interesting features in this guards area is this mirror um, because actually what you had on these uh, particular carriages you had a periscope um, obviously it's been removed with part of the roof um, but it allowed the, the guards to stand here and actually look along the length of the carriage using that sort of periscope. This is the first of our sort of passenger areas. Um, it was modified back in 2015 uh, to be accessible for wheelchairs, so they could come in through these doors. And as you can see, this door has a panel that can open wide, wider so people can come through, um, but without changing the sort of the aesthetic and the character of the carriage. Um, you can also start to see um, the work that we're doing on the roof here. Uh, now, when these carriages were originally built, they were built with wooden roofs um, and you can see the structure we put in and some planking over on this side. The problem with the wooden roofs is uh, the canvas that went over them, they wouldn't last long, maybe five, ten years. And in fact, when this was done, we used that technique and now we're having to replace it. The um, method we're using to replace it, we are still keeping it wooden, but we're going to put an epoxy coating on with canvas and we sort of trialled that two years ago and we'll show you one of those later and it's worked really well. It looks exactly the same, it's just using more modern materials that um, improve the sort of maintainability of them. Okay, so in this uh, compartment you've got a better view of the roof and the work that's going on. Essentially we're replacing everything from the cant rail um, to the ribbing to the planking and then we'll put a new uh, canvas roof on but it will go on with epoxy um, and we did that on the BY, so we did a time lapse of the BY that going on. Um, and that's been on for a couple of years now and it's worked really, really well, which is why we're going to use it here. Wherever possible, we've tried to retain uh, original pieces. So for example, the light boxes, and um, we've got some beautiful light fittings that goes there, but we've, we've managed to keep those light boxes, a few repairs, um, but otherwise it's, it's been, uh, been replaced. And then once we've done that roof, then the interior goes back in. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful interior. In fact, we'll show you one we've prepared earlier, which is, uh, was finished a few years ago with the same interior. It looks absolutely fantastic. We're very lucky at the moment that we've actually got 1456 in, which is our other bullet carriage. And this was completed a few years ago with the traditional roof. And you can see the sort of planking, and this is canvas and then sort of painted over, and you can actually see it's, it's taking a fair bit of wear. Um, and, and that's one of the problems, is once water gets in there and into the wood underneath, 
it damages it, which is why then uh, we're replacing um, as we are on this one over here. And if we go forward now, we also have the BY in. And uh, now you'll remember the footage of the BY and the time lapse. That is the first one that we've done with canvas and epoxy, a much better system. And you can see the quality now after a couple of years, uh, it's worn really, really well. Um, so we're going to and have a look at that now. It's really lasted well. It looks absolutely authentic. It's absolutely watertight. It's met our expectations, which is why we're now using that technique on this carriage over here. Um, and it'll be our sort of go-to technique for this, this type of wagon and carriage. So you remember what that looked like on the inside uh, as we were looking through. We can show you the bullet carriage over here and what it's going to look like when it's all completed. Okay, so this is a bullet carriage that has been just beautifully restored. Uh, it was finished, I think, around about 2020. The woodwork, the detailing on things like the chrome and the netting um, and the racks um, is just fantastic. And this is the sort of um, finish that will be on the carriage that we were looking at earlier. Um, as I say, this is uh, this was really built from the ground up, much much as that one was. Um, and uh, the finish is just fantastic. And it's the standard that we're trying to get to for everything. So just before you go, there's one more thing that we can show you uh, using actually an old piece of wood. Um, so wherever possible, we try and recycle or upcycle old wood. Um, and here's a perfect example. This piece of wood came from the Cabris factory at uh, Canesham, which I'm reliably informed by the residency is not in Bristol, but it's very close to Bristol. Um, you might look at it and say a rather ugly old piece of wood, but actually if you take out the screws, plug the holes and then you machine it, you end up with something that looks like this, which is absolutely fantastic, serviceable piece of wood. So if we go upstairs now, we can show you what we've done with some of that. So here's a finished product. It's uh, doors for our towed wagon. Uh, it was made by one of our volunteers um, who's in his mid-80s, uh, you know, proper craftsman. I mean, there are no metal fixings on this door. Uh, it's all sort of tongue groove, mortise and tenon joints, uh, beautifully finished. It shows you what you can do with an old piece of wood. The only thing we've had to do is probably put some epoxy in some of these old holes, but other than that, absolutely fantastic. So I hope you've enjoyed looking around the workshop and uh, we'll see you again another time. Super. Cheers, Dad. But that is it from us this week. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you next time.